So I thought we could start the summer off for EMN5 talking about poison ivy. So say you have a patient that comes in, they have this rash on their leg, it's pretty itchy, vesicular, and they say that they thought about poison ivy, but they haven't been camping recently that they can think of, haven't been taking any walks outside yesterday, and now the patient's worried that it's spreading. So it used to start on the leg, and now the patient's starting to see it on the arm. So what do you think about that? It's actually a pretty common way for poison ivy to present. So after asking a couple more questions, you find out that she was doing some brush clearing in her backyard about one week prior. She was wearing shorts, and we'll talk a little bit about this spread of the rash that she's experiencing. So let's talk about identification of poison ivy. So the classic little mnemonic for this is leaves of three, let it be. It has three leaves. The center leaf tends to have a longer stem in the middle here. Pretty smooth edges. And lastly, they have these kind of notched sides. The rash that they cause is actually from Ursa Shile, which is a chemical in the sap. It causes a contact dermatitis, which is a type four hypersensitivity reaction. It's T cell mediated, so it's a delayed type reaction. And the sap oil can actually last and remain active for years. So the rash usually appears about one to two days post-exposure. It can be a little shorter if you've had exposure before or are especially sensitive. And it can be longer if it's your first time to exposure, possibly even up to a week or so. So when you actually ask your patient about the outdoor activities, you can't just say, were you hiking in the woods yesterday? You have to try to think about any outdoor exposure from 8 hours ago to 14 days ago. The rash usually occurs by direct contact, but sap can also get on the equipment that the patient is using. So for example, camping equipment or gardening tools. So you have to think about exposure to that as well. And your little dog that just ran in the bushes, pets can get sap on them too and transfer it to humans. The rash that patients get is vesicular. It has that clear fluid inside. Sometimes it can have this linear pattern. That can either be from the leaf kind of sweeping against them as they walk by, or the patient gets the sap under their fingernails from scratching an affected area and transfers it to a new area causing those linear scratch marks. It's usually pretty itchy, sometimes painful, and can sometimes have some pretty large bulla. So it affects the skin, but can also affect the airway if you inhale smoke from a burning plant, for example. And there are a couple case reports of digestive tracts being affected when the patient swallowed the leaves. So let's talk about the patients experiencing this spread of a rash. So is it really spreading? No. Patients usually ask, is the fluid inside the vesicles contagious? Can I pass it on to someone else, or is that why it keeps spreading around my body? So the answer to that is no. The Ursa Shile is not inside the vesicle fluid. That's just serous fluid as a part of the hypersensitivity reaction. Patients do, however, get the sap on their skin and spread it around with their hands from itching, or many times what happens is the sap gets on equipment, like we talked about before, and the patient keeps spreading it around themselves and to others hours, days, even possibly weeks later. So let's talk a little bit about prevention. This is not what she should wear when hiking in the woods. This patient's definitely going to get poison ivy. So make sure you wear long sleeves, high socks, pants are really good, and use your eyes. Look around, try to find that three-leafed plant, and just stay away from it. And here's a really cool fashion. Tuck the pants inside the socks. This is actually more for tick prevention, but it probably works for poison ivy as well. So if you or a family member or someone you're hiking with is exposed, the first thing you want to tell them to do is wash up very thoroughly as soon as possible. The Ursa Child takes about 10 to 20 minutes to actually bind and soak into the skin and start causing the irritation. So the best thing you can do is actually just get that sap off in the first 10 to 20 minutes. Prevent the reaction to begin with. Next, make sure you get all your clothes off, wash your clothes, wash your equipment, and try to help prevent spread. But you have this patient in the ER, they already have a rash, what's our treatment for them? So there are a lot of folk remedies they might ask you about. Some might be helpful. Um, none have really been proven to cure or cause more help than just symptomatic care that we recommend in the ER. They're welcome to try it. Symptomatic care is going to be antihistamines for itching. You can recommend oatmeal baths or calamine lotion just for comfort. Low-dose steroid bursts aren't really recommended. If they do have a really bad kind of systemic rash, you might recommend a 10 to 14 day steroid taper. If you stop sooner, for example, that three day burst we give asthmatics, the rash can actually kind of pop back up again, so they do recommend a full steroid taper. So three to remember from this talk, the rash is from the sap of the plant that contains the Ursa Shile chemical in it. The vesicles themselves do not contain that chemical, so the fluid is not going to cause more rash. That leads us to treatment, so post-exposure you need to get that sap off. So make sure and wash up, wash your clothes, wash your skin. And then treatment is going to be supportive, try antihistamines, and possibly consider steroids if they have a bad reaction. Here's the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.